2022. Certainly is for me. Uh, but really, the actual answer to that is I'm playing a little game with myself. I mean, I mean that literally. Because you know that game where you wear a post-it note on your head and it, it says the name of a famous person. And then through clues, you have to work out who that famous person is. It's sort of an alternate version of that game. I don't have real people's names on it, but things related to senses, right? The, the five senses. I know there are more than that. But this is sent to myself, not by anybody in this studio or people watching at home, but by myself from 2008. And you're probably thinking, that's weird, Lawrence. It's, it's a visualization of the things at that time that hit my senses, that, uh, uh, you know, me landing in America for the first time, I saw, smelt, felt, heard, and what's the other one? There's another sense. I did it. I did all that with new things, things I'd never experienced, you know, until I moved to the US. And so throughout this live stream, we're going to go through different sticky notes, and I'm just going to give a brief description of what that sense was. And at the same time, you're going to do your bit by sending in questions because this is a Q&A. And I specifically set it up because I'm aware of the fact that I've recently gained, you know, a lot of new subscribers. So hello, if you are watching. And I just thought this would be a great way to get to know what I've experienced of the US and all of the fun things that you expect to see on this channel. So you know, ask me anything about those things. Could be food related, could be language related, could be fashion related. You know, I've got a lot of hot tips. So don't just answer me or ask me here. You can also uh, go ahead and follow me on Twitter, uh, where I also um, impart some of my wisdom from the fashion world. He says, sitting in a t-shirt and underpants, shorts. I am. I'm wearing. I'm wearing shorts. Promise. And so Twitter. If you want to follow me, everybody should look out at their chat area because that's where I'm going to post some useful links throughout. So this is the first one. It's coming right through. There it is. Follow, follow Lawrence on Twitter if you are a user of that very thing. Looks like we just got a donation. This is from Moazo9. Thank you for that donation. And just a quick explanation of the donations feature when it comes to Super Chat. If you want to donate to Lost in the Pond, you can do so by clicking that dollar symbol down at the bottom of the chat. Um, and you can repeat uh, the steps that were taken here by Moaz O, number nine, who says, do you watch Doctor Who? And that's a, that's a very good question. I do watch it. I used to watch it religiously. And then, uh, and then life happened, and it also went off the air for two years. But yes, I do watch it very much, and um, I'm very much looking forward to next year's 60th anniversary, BBC anniversary. Is that right? I'm No, no, Doctor Who. I don't know. Something like that. Uh, so yes, I am. And it's interesting, you know, I think since I moved to the US, I didn't really expect Doctor Who or British television in general to transfer as well as it has done to the United States. And I think a lot of my followers will know this just because a lot of you happen to be Anglophiles. And, you know, it's, it's very interesting to me. And the more I look into it, this, the more I realize that British television has been very popular here for the longest time, you know, and PBS has been carrying different shows all this time. And I had no idea. So it's very fun to exchange sort of, uh, you know, interactions about British TV with Americans who often say similar things like, oh, how do you how do you have a show that only has one episode or three, you know, versus a million um, on cable television here in the US? Looks like we've got a, a donation just uh, now. This is from Jeffrey. Thank you, Jeffrey. He says, love your videos. Keep it up. I intend to. I've been going seven years now, for those of you that don't know. And, uh, you know, I've, I've got no intention of quitting, you know, how, however many people might wish me to do so. I'm going to stick to my guns on this. This is my channel and it's staying where it is. You know, but we're going to get more subscribers, so that will be useful. So at this time, let's just take a quick break just to show you this. My hands is what it says. And it says my hands, which might seem weird, right? Because you use your hands to touch things. But it was my hands that I noticed were turning a, a sort of different shade of peel 
and uh, and white and frostiness in that first few days of being in the US. We're talking early November too. It was just a particularly cold November in Indiana and it was freezing. I'd never experienced a November like this. I mean, when I say freezing for my British audience, I mean it in the literal sense. It actually reached, I think that day, zero degrees Celsius. And for my American audience, I don't know how to translate it. It's about 33, I think, 32, 33 Fahrenheit. And I, it was just weird. It was weird to feel my nose hairs freezing. Nobody should ever have to feel that. And that's why I often say that the weather in the Midwest of the United States is not entirely fit for humans. So that's that. Okay. So, yeah. So I'll go through this live stream and I'll just be picking up another sticker at random, you know, and putting it on my forehead. And we'll reach uh, the part of the live stream where I'll, where I'll explain why it's there. So uh, let's go for another one. Let's get that. Woo! I just went, ooh. <laughs> what? This what is what is it? No, no, this was this was a note to myself. Yeah, no, I that was not meant to be part of the game. Hope you didn't see that. It was if you did, I just have a backlog of big big Ben photographs on my phone. And that's not a euphemism for anyone thinking that it is. All right. Uh, looks like another donation came in. Thank you for that. You are amazing. Thank you, Georgianne. Thank you for that donation. Now, let's take a look at some of your questions that have come in here. Um, oh, that's great. Yo Tone uh, discovered th this channel when I visited Jungle Gym's international store. That's in Ohio. And I, it was a good discovery, that, because for the longest time, I, I thought or I was under the impression that you couldn't get British food here in the US, or at least a big variety of it. And Jungle Gyms International Store happened to happen to have that. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, so let's see, where were we? Uh, I'm looking for question marks. Uh, do you, do you peruse TikTok? This is from Zesty. I do peruse TikTok. I should have had that at the ready because I don't know what my TikTok URL is, but I think there is a link to it in my on my YouTube page. So if you go there, you will be able to click to my TikTok. Great. I feel so young saying that. I feel like it's such a modern young chap, you know, but if you've seen my videos, you'll know that's not true. All right. What just happened there? I just saw a big flash uh, and, and, and some stuff. And uh, oh, it's uh, another donation. Thank you, Christ Christine, uh, for that. And it's for the morning doves. Oh, those morning doves. And if you've not had the chance to check out that video, you can do that. It's on my channel again if you go to my main page. Morning doves, you know, they just sort of planted themselves outside of my window. Like, who does that in 2022? But they did, and they've mostly kept themselves to themselves. They don't spy on me. That would be weird if they turned out to be robotic doves, spies. I've only just thought about this. This could be bad. This could be bad. The thing is, they keep flying off and coming back. They've had multiple children so far. So it's it's really strange. Um, so, so anyway, that donation was not for me. It was for the doves. So I will set that aside, Christine. Thank you. And it will go to the doves or at least a, you know, a fund of some kind to help birds in general. Uh, that's just what I'm all about. So magnanimous. Okay, great. Um, what questions do we have, guys? Looks like we've got some food-related questions. This comes from uh, Sally, uh, who says, is there a good international store in Chicago where you can purchase lots of British food? You know, I haven't really encountered too many. Um, it's kind of tricky in this area. I think it's because there's not a massive contingency of, of us lot, you know, the British. There are some British-related, you know, outlets like pubs, the Globe, for example, the pub. And um, there's also one or two restaurants, one that's known to me, that's an Irish restaurant that also has a kind of store inside it. And off the top of my head, I don't remember it, but look this up. It's an Irish pub in, I think, the north side. And it sells, you know, Cadbury's and other things, or at least it did. This was a few years ago now, so I might not be doing it any justice. Uh, great. Okay. And uh, let's see. Uh, Amber says, and thank you for the donation, Amber. Amber says, get yourself some chicken fried steak. Again, if you're new to the channel, watch that video like hundreds of thousands of people did, weirdly. 
And you'll see me enjoying, for the first time, something I'd never heard of until a week before, a chicken fried steak, which is a very weird concoction. Can you call it a concoction? It's just a thing, isn't it? Um, great. Okay. Uh, this comes from, uh, I think it's Nayers. I'm not good at pronouncing any names, even my own. Uh, but they ask, uh, will you be doing any collabs with some of the other YouTubers who react to your content, such as the Beasley's, Mr. H, Lav Luca, and the Office Blokes? You know, I wouldn't rule it out. I feel like there's a, gr a great synergy to use an expression from, you know, the American workplace and probably the British workplace at this point. Between us, you know, in that um, we sort of, I think we bounce off each other in many ways. And uh, I, I mean, I'd be open to it for sure. Excuse me. <clears throat> Frog in my throat. I'm going to have to have a coffee. It's not sponsored by Starbucks. It just happens to be a Starbucks cup. All right. Hmm. So, yeah, I could, I could definitely see us doing that. Perhaps we ought to get in touch. Maybe we should just have a big collaboration where we all, you know, meet up over Zoom. And they just react to me and I react to them reacting to me. It would just get so meta and I'd be there for it. Gosh, I sound like one of the kids. I've just realized I never put on another sticker. I'm not playing my own game very well, am I? I'll do that. I've got the next one. Make sure. I hope is this this isn't one that I've already used, is it? All right. Okay. So I've got another one on my head. I'll address that in a second. We did get another donation come in. Thank you, Christopher. Uh, I believe you indicated your fashion with the USA started with a book from the library as a youth. Therefore, how do libraries differ on the other side of the pond? That is a good question. Um, firstly, uh, Christopher's correct. Uh, you know, I think if you saw my welcome video recently, specifically those of you who are new to my channel, you will have learned that, yes, indeed, is it around here? No, I've left it in my own library bookshelf, just one singular bookshelf. Uh, I had a book, I have a book that I took out of my school library when I was 12. Actually, it was on it was on my birthday because it's, it's stamped in the book still. And it's America, an aerial view. And it just gave me a sort of, you know, a view from above, obviously, of the United States, something I didn't really have for each of the 50 states until that point. All I had at that point was a knowledge of the states. I knew them. I could name them all because I was, you know, a bit of a geek and all their capitals. But I like to put names to faces, you know, and uh, that's what I did in getting this book and keeping it without telling anyone, although now I've told thousands of people. So that's that. Oh, but oh, library differences. That's a very good question. I've obviously been in many libraries. I think, I don't know if there are, if there are any that really stand out, because to some extent, a library is a library, you know, but I think that, uh, I know this, in London, when I lived in Tower Hamlets in the east end of London, the library and having a library card was kind of associated with getting kind of free services around the city. For example, I think I got free entry into the Tower of London, for example. Not sure if that happens here. Maybe it does. Um, but it's not something I've encountered. That was just the first thing that came to my head. Bear in mind, my head is currently being masked by a post-it note. So it's harder to think on your feet. All right, but thanks for that, Christopher. And um, let me just uh, cycle back then through the questions. I know that a lot of things are coming in, so it's it's hard to keep on top. Tony G, thanks for the donation, Tony. Do you still enjoy a good Sunday roast? I enjoy a bad Sunday roast. Sunday roasts are absolutely amazing. I mean, what a combination. The combination, you know, can vary, but it should have Yorkshire puddings. It should have, what am I missing, mashed potato, and that's it, really. I mean, I, I'd be fine with just those things. A lot of carb, not much protein. So, you know, I would prefer to have a roast chicken or, or beef. But if it's got to be just those two things, I would be in dreamland. Because, frankly, Yorkshire puddings are the greatest invention after the internet. And if you don't believe me, you can look that up on the internet. It's all good. So thank you for that, Tony. Great question. And uh, well, here, here's... Here's a niche question. This is, I like this. This is from uh, uh, Womo Bu uh, Buo. Womo Buo. Oh, I can't speak. Can't speak. Have you been to Frankenmuth, Michigan? Shop at the world's largest Christmas store called Bronner's. Amazing. I haven't, but I, I have been to Michigan. It was pointed out to me the other day 
that still to this day, I believe, that the largest outdoor attended soccer match ever took place in Michigan in 2014 between Manchester United and Real Madrid. And I was there. I was one of the 109,000 people that was, you know, cheering on some people and uh, who I couldn't see, you know, and it, it and that it was a great experience, I'm told. And uh, I I loved being in Michigan. This was in Ann Arbor, by the way. Uh, I don't know if that's near to uh, you know, Frankenmuth or if I pronounce that correctly, because as you find on this show, there's plenty of place names in the US that I entirely butcher, you know, but um, this was uh, this was quite a glorious uh, place. By the way, uh, those of you sending in donations, thank you for those. Um, it's, it's very kind and it really does, you know, go toward uh, making this channel better. I think any kind of, you know, donation or support that can be given to my YouTube channel or anyone's YouTube channel is very helpful. And over the years, if you go back to my first videos, you'll see there's quite a difference between those ones and the ones today. And that's just because we've had all of this support and I've been able to improve it. Um, and that includes uh, donations. I just want to say, though, if I've missed anyone's donation, because they fly in so fast and sometimes, you know, you miss them. My apologies for that right off the bat, especially if you had a question. Uh, but thank you. Thank you. Just a general thank you if you are able to donate. Um, and similarly as well, and I often mention this, of course, but one good way to support the channel and also to get more live streams like this, because we do them every single week, uh, is to become a patron of Lost in the Pond, which you can actually do at the link that's about to be posted right there. Uh, great. All right, back to the questions. And which should I do first? Should I do the sticker or the questions? I think what I'll do is I will pull off the post-it note. It's going to pull my hair off. Pickup trucks, right? This this pertains to sight. This pertains to the things I could see when I first moved here. And of course, you know, there, there was obviously more going on than just pickup trucks. But I, I'm talking about here, I think, the things that sort of lasted in my head, the enduring images. And for some reason, pickup trucks are the things that stand out because you know, I got driven from the airport to Anderson, where, where I ultimately lived for four years. And of course, on that road, I-69, you see a lot of vehicles, but the ones that really stood out were the pickup trucks, because we didn't have a lot of those in the UK. I suspect we still don't. And and it was just very jarring, you know, to see something so huge. And in some cases, they were covered in lights. Like it was, it was amazing. It was, it was just like seeing, it was like you were seeing a moving Las Vegas just in the form of a pickup truck. And so I, I didn't dare ask what was inside it, you know, it could have been anything, but it looked cool. And, uh, and that's, it was very enduring. Uh, Taco Cat598, thank you for the donation, uh, says, have you been to New Mexico? I haven't, sadly, nor the, uh, the Southwest in general. I, I really want to see it. My wife's been to Arizona, which I recognize is not the same as New Mexico, but um, said it's otherworldly, and and I'd love to sort of experience that. So hopefully at some point it will happen. Same with everywhere else. I, I, I get people saying, ooh, Lawrence, you've never been to the South, right? Firstly, that's not true. I've been to Florida, right, when I was eight. Uh, but secondly, it's not a sort of, you know, uh, predetermined on my part necessarily. It's just, it's what you can afford at certain times, and, and can you justify it and budget for it and all that. But I want to get to everywhere. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, this is a good question. This is from uh, Doctor Who fan Jay. So there's plenty of Doctor Who fans in the house, it sounds like. Uh, asks, if you could choose anywhere you want, where in the world would you want to live? Right? Does it have to be Britain and America? Certainly not. You know, I was in Paris just uh, this year and that place was lovely because I went there thinking, oh, you know, I'm going to have to do all the touristy things, go to the Louvre, pretend to be impressed by the Mona Lisa, which I've already seen a thousand times. But we didn't do any of that, really. We just walked around with coffees, which looked a bit American, to be honest. But you, you don't really do that. You go to cafes and just sit there and that's it, really. I mean, no, I, we did more than that, but it was just such a beautiful departure from the pace of life in you know other places although i say that when you get down to the the metro the, or rather the train area everybody's rushing you know so that's not so great <clears throat> excuse me 
Um, it is the Indy 500 tomorrow, Ginger remember, uh, reminds us. Uh, it is. Is it? Is it? I don't know. But I, yeah, never got to go. Never got to, even when I lived in Indianapolis, uh, which was, you know, for quite a while. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, Bill says, Lawrence, I also live in the United States of America. Well done, Bill. We all, I think a lot of us do. I hope. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, what are the questions we got? Let's take a look here. I'm just going to cycle through. It's the thing with this. On my secret live streams, which is the Patreon um, live streams, it's a bit easier to keep up with the comments and the questions that come in. We just have so many. I need to get my own, you know, person that uh, that does these things, I think. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, I'm just looking for question marks. I think that makes it easy. Maybe I should just do control F question mark. There's one. Uh, do Charles asks, do you ever wear a Peaky Blinders hat like Andy Cap? I think it would be tricky with, you know, these on your head. Because for, well, firstly, people will think I left in the tag, you know, and I've often been accused of that justifiably because that's something I've often done. But uh, it, it, I, I think it might hamper my look. And I'm trying to I'm trying to set trends, not go back in time to them. You can see it's it's working out very well for me. So there is that. Go to a truck pull, says Amanda. That would be such a Midwestern thing. And in fact, I've been to a fair, right? The Midwest and I think the US in general loves its state fairs, doesn't it? Um, or even county fairs. And you see things like that, tractor pulls and pig racing. I saw pigs being raced. You know, I don't know who won. It's irrelevant. I saw pigs being raced. Can you believe it? Yeah, that is that is something that's happened in my life since I moved to the US. Not something that regularly occurred in England. Um, well, not voluntarily, you know. Sometimes it might happen if somebody left the barn door open again, Lawrence. But other than that, I, I never saw pigs being intentionally raced by their human overlords so this was this was the indiana state fair where i also saw the world's largest sow and that's not an insult against someone who is running it i'm saying this was genuinely the biggest sow in the world this is what they were saying you know you couldn't get out of the fair it was in the way it was unbelievable yeah. So, all right, let's go down then to the the bottom here. I, I really need to start pronouncing my H's. What do you think? Um, I stopped doing it just so we could all, you know, be on the same page with herb. I only do it if I'm in a rush. Okay. So let me go down then uh, to the questions. What is your favorite flavor of coffee? Asks Amanda. And thank you for the donation, Amanda. I love hazelnut. I love hazelnut flavored coffee. Um, it's weird. I was working for a company where I wasn't particularly happy. This it was a job that I just, you know, I wasn't I wasn't feeling it. It was in Indiana. And uh, but one day I got this hazelnut coffee and it completely changed my entire outlook on the world, not the job. I soon quit. But the coffee was wonderful. It was very good. And I still drink it to this day. This, however, is I think it's some sort of Ethiopian bean. And it's lovely itself. I, I am under the realization that it is 7.24 in the evening. Probably shouldn't be drinking too much coffee, especially since I have to be up early at the crack of dawn tomorrow to do laundry. Why? I don't know. All right. Uh, thank you for the donation, uh, Crafts for Others. Um, my husband and I, uh, for our 15th anniversary, were supposed to go to London. However, he passed away. I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, but uh, Crafts for Others says, I'm still going. Uh, recommendations for unique museum. You know, off the top of my head, uh, if it's specifically London, a unique museum. I don't know. There's obviously a lot of museums. So you've got the Tate Modern out there. You've got the British Museum. Um, you know, there's the, what is it, the Museum of Science and Industry. There's, there are a lot of good ones. There are, and I think they used to be. I don't know if they still are. They should be free. Uh, so you should just be able to walk in, but check on that because I haven't looked into it in a while. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Uh, all right. What are the question marks we got, guys? Whoops. There we go. 
There's a lot of people watching this at the minute, nearly 600 of you. That's crazy, but in a good way. You know, I don't feel too out of my comfort zone. If you were all here right now and I was doing this, that would be a different story as an introvert. But then when I think it through and I realize, wow, you, you right there. Yeah, you, you're a real person and you're sitting at home watching this. And then I multiply you by 600 very different people and you're all watching me. Sorry, occasionally I just have very scary realizations about my existence and I have to come to terms with that. Okay, right. I'm going to have another coffee. Well, it's the same coffee, but it, it just I need the caffeine to do its thing. Clearly, it already has, and that's great for everyone except me. All right, let's scroll down here. Um, this is a good question, and, and actually, I've got a broader answer to this. From uh, Overground55, thank you for the donation, who says, do you ever get annoyed when Americans say, I could care less? I don't, actually. I get, I get the, you know, why people do and all of that. I just, long ago, I kind of, I came to this decision that, not decision, but I, I sort of realized that, you know, language evolves, it does its own thing. And a lot of the time, what happens is you get phrases that don't really make a lot of sense at first, but then they get said so many times that eventually people forget about the fact that they don't make sense and they just become a normal part of English. And I trained myself to not be too bothered by that because I'm fascinated by it. I'm fascinated by who was the first person who instead of saying couldn't care less, said I could care less. Um, and then in doing so, how did that spread? You know, that's what I want to know about is, is sort of the history of this thing. And, and then how did it take off? It's like addicting. I used to really find the word addicting not great, right? And and then I just thought, well, but but it came about somehow, you know, and, and what's the story there? It's always more fascinating to me how it came about than... Um, you know, what it sort of uh, does to my stomach. It's probably a visual I shouldn't have put out there, but I did it anyway. Uh, Anthony, thank you. I love the state series, pronouncing place names. You did a great job with the Delaware video. Thank you. I, phew, I didn't know what I was doing, but I will say this, state by state, I think I'm just getting a better understanding for what to expect, for working out why a place name is said the way it is, and then sort of going with that instinct. Maybe by the end, by the time we get to Wyoming, I'll be absolutely fluent in American place names to where I will be getting 13 out of 13 on all of them. Please nobody play this back to me but after I've done the Wyoming video because it's that's not going to be the reality. I think we all know that. Um Yes. All right. Great. Uh, there's so much going on. So many questions. I just saw a question mark. Where was it? Go back, Lawrence. One thing that often happens when I'm doing live streams is that my mouse, I need a new one, it skips the, the questions on and I don't like that. Um, and uh, Green Pill Neo, Matrix reference. Um, OMG, I've never seen you live. I haven't either until now. It's so weird. Uh, we'll go back to that. Uh, what are your thoughts or what do you think of Tennessee in general? So I've only been to Tennessee once. I've been to Nashville, had a great time there, actually. The, the problem with it is, and it's not Tennessee or Nashville's fault, it is sort of, it's caught up at a time when I, I got fired from a job. So we ran away to Tennessee for a weekend. It was immature. I needed the money. No, I blew the money. That was the problem. But we went to Nashville and had a fun time, you know, and uh, I'd happily go back again. I'd prefer to go back when it's not February, you know, but that's that's true of most of the United States above a certain point on the map. You know, oh, uh, Lawrence, don't bang the table. That again, not a euphemism. I just gently knocked it with my knee. Um, right. OK, great. Uh, so, yes, that's that's my thoughts on Tennessee. Nashville's good. That's all I have to go on, I'm afraid. Uh, but I do want to, as I said, I want to visit all of the states. I've been saying this for years, mind. If you go back to a video of mine from, I think it was about ooh, maybe 2017, I said, oh, I want to do all of the 50 states next year, right? What? You know, I didn't think through the funding of this, nor the 
undertaking that it would be in terms of the distance I'd have to travel because that's just the kind of idiot I am. I've just realized, speaking of idiots, I didn't put another sticker on me, Ed. Got to get through all these stickers, otherwise the entire premise of this live stream will crumble under the weight of paper. And that would be bad for everyone. Addictive, says Quincy, uber vegan. It, it, well, indeed. I mean, that, that's the word I choose to use today, but I'm, I'm a bit less intolerant of the word addicting. Okay, this is a good question. This is from Tony G, 1975. And Tony G, 1975 says, what is your subscriber split between the US and UK? Are we allowed to give this out publicly? Because this is just this is information that's for me and my and those third parties. There are no third parties. Don't worry about that. Yeah, it's okay. So I think roughly speaking, believe it or not, it's it's kind of 85% America and 15%. Well, it's a bit less than 15% Britain, because then we've got Canada, Germany, France. They're the big ones after that. Uh, Nashville in the house says Michael. Hello. Hello. Anyone else from Nashville? And yeah. So Check on the Space and Rocket Center here in Huntsville, Alabama, says Tom. I'm all about space. That part of the world, of course, you've got that. But you've also in Florida got Kennedy Space Center where I've been. You've got Houston, where I hear they have a problem just, just from the film and real life. All right, great. Um, quickly then, let's see. What are the question marks? What have I got on my head, guys? What does it say? What does it say? Read it to me. I've just realized I can't hear you. Can I, that is a really silly request on my part. So I'm just going to pull it off here and have a read myself. Cinnamon. So did I? That doesn't look right. That doesn't look right. Why does that look misspelled? Is that right? Do you ever do that? Do you ever look at a word and go, Ooh, you probably don't go as high pitched as that. But do you ever think, oh, that does not look correct. I, I once did that with the word pencil was convinced there was an S. I don't know why. But anyway, I just did that with cinnamon. Now that I look at it again, it, it looks right. I think I'm thinking of cinema with just the one N. Anyway, cinnamon was the first smell, or at least the first smell that stands out once you get past the horse manure. So, or maybe it was cow, because it was Indiana. But I, the cinnamon thing, even though it was the first smell I kind of really remembered, it was probably an Auntie Anne's at Indianapolis Airport or something like that. I, I haven't warmed to it. I don't know why. I've never really warmed to cinnamon. But the reason that I should mention this is that that smell is not as pervasive in Britain. You don't really, there aren't too many places you walk past and go, ooh, another whiff of cinnamon, right? It's rare because I, I don't think we put it in as much or as many things as America does. You know, it's in a lot of desserts here. And that just sticks out for me, that time. Uh, when I first arrived here, it's probably literally as I got off the plane. I bet, you know, one of the uh, stewards had a cinnamon bagel or something like that. And uh, it was just like, welcome to Indianapolis. You will smell this a lot. You will smell this a lot. And you'll smell a lot because it's hot all the time. All right. Oh, there we go. Uh, we have a donation. Thank you for this from Scott, who says, look up... Um, Allerton Park in Monticello, Illinois. Also, am I pronouncing Monticello correctly? Because I found instances of that being pronounced Monticello if we're not talking about Virginia. It's a hidden treasure in central Illinois and would make a great video for your channel. Thank you for that, Scott, because, you know, I went to... Um, oh, where was it? Goodness. My brain is forgetting places. Um, but there's, I went to a place last year and did a video here in Illinois. What is it called? It's, it, there's, a, there's like, I do this every time. I think I did this on my Patreon live stream and I had to be reminded of what it is. I don't have a good memory anymore. I used to, but then I forgot about it. Okay. Uh, th that Starving Rock. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Yeah. Um, same person who asked the question was able to help me out. So that's always good. Um Will asks, have you fallen in love with Chicago yet? I did it within days of being here. It gets this weird, uh, made-up, fantastical bad press, you know, um, that it's just a, a massive war zone. It's It really isn't. Like, especially where I live on the north side, but also the downtown area, the main area of Chicago, where you think of Chicago, 
doesn't have that going on much at all. And it's just a beautiful place. And when I visited in uh, 2014, it was the summer, I'd already been five times in the winter. And I, I just said, no, not for me. But then when I visited in the summer, it was a completely different story. And uh, I've lived here ever since, six years now. I worked out the other day, it, this is the longest I've lived anywhere that isn't called Grimsby, which is my hometown in England where I grew up. And you, know, you might think, well, that's not that impressive. Well, yeah, maybe not, but I've lived in a number of places. Lancaster, England, London, England, Anderson, Indiana, Indianapolis, Indiana, Fort Wayne, Indiana. But this is the longest, except for Grimsby, that I've lived anywhere. And uh, it's it's good to be uh, here. Uh, Michael, uh, thank you for the donation. Uh, says, uh, if you come back to Nashville, try to pronounce Lafayette Street. Ooh, Lafayette, maybe, maybe. You don't have to actually visit the street, just pronounce the name. Well, I will, I'll try it after some, you know, effort on my part, because uh, we have a Lafayette, Laf Lafayette in Indiana, but I'm, I'm aware that that name uh, is replicated throughout the United States, but the pronunciation isn't always the same. So yes, I'll, I'll be on the lookout for that. Great. Uh, let's see. Whoops. Where was I? All right, back to the uh, questions. Um, uh, have you been? This is from uh, Devonda Studios. Devonda Studios. Have you been to Arkansas? And how do you pronounce Arkansas? Arkansas. I've not been. No, I have not. Again, it's sort of in that pocket of southern states that isn't Florida that I haven't been to yet. Um, but it's again, it's on the radar to do it. Um, cause here's, there's a lot of things with this, right? I always say, Ooh, I can't wait to get to Kansas. You know, people go, there's nothing there. It's just, you know, a drive through state, a flat land. Um, but that makes me want to go more firstly. And then secondly, I, I believe everywhere has a place of interest that would, would, you know, captivate me in some, some way that I wouldn't expect. And so that's, that's why I would like to do it. Definitely. All right. Uh, let's see questions for me or for anyone you could ask where's my cat he was in here he's gone now who wants to ask my cat something we'll we'll wait for that um i hope you visit georgia says king claw blazer thank you for that king claw blazer and i hope to as well absolutely i'm sure i'll fly into atlanta it seems like everybody does given the uh, buildup of delta airlines there what time are we at? We are at 7.38. That's at least local time for me. I don't want to make anybody who lives on Eastern time or the other time zones feel weird with me saying that. Cat, hello, says Jane. That, that'll do. Yes. Oh, and Erica. Yes, says the same thing. Well, he's through there. He's through, and he's adorable. I mean, you've all seen him. Got to put another sticker on my head. Otherwise, I'm not playing my game the way I said I would. Okay. Sunday roast with stuffing, says Doc Dr. Who fan Jay. Uh, oh, yay or nay? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did I leave off stuffing earlier on? Cancel me. Cancel me now, he says, with that on his head. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Great. All right. Um, brilliant. Brilliant stuff. Got to have stuffing. You are the man. Arby's, number one, uh, says Louis the... 28th or 7th i missed it. it it went off my screen but thank you arby's yeah i think you know where this is going um but we'll get to that in just a second because i have a you know a little bit of an anecdote um all right so naruto naruto kari thank you uh, for the donation would you come back to indiana and visit frankfurt next year for the hot dog festival well you i mean you've sold me on hot dogs really I'd love to do that, and um, I would I would be happy to to visit. Yeah, yeah. I need more festivals in my life. And, you know, Lollapalooza is happening right now. That's that's a bit heavy for me, you know. But I need something that that would be like that for sure. Potato cakes, potato quake says Dan Quails. It's spelled potato. It was when he corrected that kid. Oh, great times, great times. That was that was the height of political scandal back then. It was great, great times. Um, uh, Coffee Cat says, I'm avoiding downtown Chicago this weekend. Too crowded. Yeah, it is. It's very crowded. No question about it. 
Um, the Hot Dog Festival, says Beaker Top, is wonderful. Just got back from it. Amazing. I'd never heard of it. That's really bad. Um, I'm trying to think where Frankfort is in Indiana. Is it in the north north of it or the south or central? I'm trying to picture it in my head whenever I've looked at an Indiana map. Um, great. Have you tried? Oh, this is unbelievable timing, Greg. Greg asks, have you tried corny dogs or is it corn dogs? Um, we, we made some tonight, weirdly enough. And it took me a while for me to get into corn dogs. At first, I didn't like them. You know, I just thought, ooh, they're a Midwest version of hot dogs on a stick, but not. Yeah, so but it, but, it, but I came round to it uh, after a while. Um, Mamalia says, I highly recommend, thank you for the donation, I highly recommend the Schmeckfest German Food Festival in South Dakota. Here we go. Here we go. Great. Send me a festival's. Right, and I'll be there at some point. I can't do all of the festivals in one go. That would be tiring, you know, not just on me, but on you. You'd have to watch day after day after day of Lawrence going to a festival. I'm sure you couldn't stomach that. So that's my two cents on that. Uh, right. Speaking of South Dakota, Alicia uh, asks uh, to see Mount Rushmore. Have I done that? I have not. I've done it in flight simulator. I have done it in flight simulator it's for, you know, PC. You get in a plane and you fly in, and it's really good nowadays. It's pretty realistic. And I've been to, you know, a lot of the major landmarks. I've even tried to land unsuccessfully on Lakeshore Drive in Chicago. Very bad idea. Okay, this is uh, this question comes in. This is from Ashton. Again, thank you for the donation, Ashton. Uh, favorite American food? Uh, and English food that you miss the most. So my favorite American food, it evolves over time. I think anyone who's been watching this channel now for a while will know who is going to say, you know, pecan pie. But this year I gave up added sugar. So I've, I've had to try to find new things that I like. And, and then you've got to be careful that those things don't have added sugar in them. So I don't know what my favorite thing is right now. Perhaps I'm trying to experiment with finding that out. It's probably French fries right now you know, which is a really cop out of an answer, but, um, but it doesn't have added sugar, generally speaking. And the English food that I miss the most, I think it is Yorkshire puddings or sausage rolls, you know, and you can get both here, but not in the shops. Usually Yorkshire puddings, the equivalent being popovers most of the time and sausage rolls are just amazing, but I, it's very hard to, to find those, um, in the U S so sometimes we make them. And that's always fun. Um, did I, uh, Keith asks, did you ever eat at the Triple X in Lafayette? I'm absolutely curious as to what that is. I will Google it afterward. Is that a good idea? Could be, could be good. We'll see. Um, right. All right. I'm looking for more question marks. I'm seeing a lot of exclamation marks. That either means that I'm doing a great job or a terrible one. But are there question marks? If there are, that could also mean either of those. And uh, have you had a kalachi, says Eddie. I don't think I have, Eddie. What is that? I probably should know. And I probably do know. It's just it's late-ish, although I've had coffee. Lawrence, when you visit Minnesota, uh, says Zoe, you'll have to go to the Rena uh, Renaissance Festival in Shakopee. I guarantee I just butchered the pronunciation of that place. I would love to do that. Do you know, I've been to a couple of Renaissance fairs in the US. It's kind of a phenomenon that I didn't know existed until I moved here, where, you know, people dress up like they're from the Renaissance period. And uh, we went to one in Maryland. I think it was in, uh, not Baltimore. It was in, it was in Annapolis, I think. And we went, so we went there. And then I went up to one in Wisconsin the other year. And it was really hot because it was August. And there I was dressed like, you know, a sort of Renaissance Han Solo, even had the waist jacket and everything and the holster. It was, but it was hot. It was very hot. And I can't even imagine what some of the, you know, uh, women who were wearing big dresses felt like. Um, maybe as an act of kind of camaraderie, I should replicate that myself next year for humor. Just put on a big dress and a beard. 
Could be fun. Could be fun. All right. So let's see. New sticky, please. Oh, yes. Good, good question. Uh, Legal Beagle reminded me. Arby's. It was the first food I ate after I moved here, right? I'd been to the US before, so I'd had food before. But this, this was the first food I'd had after touching down in Indiana back in 2008. It was late at night. And we drove to an Arby's, I think in Daleville, Indiana, just outside of Anderson, and got uh, I got a roast beef sandwich and curly fries. And for a little bit there, I was a bit in love with the curly fries mainly. And um, yeah, we don't have Arby's in the UK, so this was a it was a new thing for me. You know, I was expecting to see Burger King and McDonald's and KFC and all of those fast food outlets that we very much have back in the UK. But uh, then I realized there were more Wendy's, Arby's, Hardy's, or whatever they call it out west. Um, you know, uh, oh, oh, the one that makes you, you know, have gas. Sorry, that that was a euphemism. Uh, what's it called? White Castle. Did you know? And you will know this if you saw my video on the subject a few years ago. White Castle is reportedly the uh, the first fast food. Uh, company in in America. It emerged, what was it, early 1920s, I think it was. Um, what's the weirdest, this comes from Robert, thank you for the donation, Robert, what's the weirdest American food you actually liked? Scrapple is a weird one, uh, says Robert. I've not had Scrapple, but the weirdest American food that I've had, I've had a few, I have had a few. Oh, goodness. What is a we Oh, I haven't had it yet, but I'm thinking of doing a video on this. Um, oh, what's it called? Horseshoe. I saw this the other day. I was thinking about, you know, um, going back to chicken fried steak. I was thinking about a video along those lines again, right, for the Midwest, specifically Illinois, because I think horseshoe originated here, if I'm not mistaken. And it looks weird, but I haven't had it yet. So stay tuned, because that video is hopefully coming in the future. Really, really strange stuff. Carl's Jr. Thank you, Erica. That is the name of Hardy's out west. I went to, I think it was Idaho Falls. I found myself in Idaho Falls once, and they had a Carl's Jr. But I happened to notice the logo was identical to that of Hardy's. It was like you could almost make them into a stand-up comedy routine together. Instead of Laurel and Hardy's, you have Carl and Hardy's. Just wouldn't be the same. Great. All right. Uh, oh, I don't have another. And this is the last one. And it was given away in the thumbnail. And the stickiness has run out. So it might fall off my forehead. It's jazz. It's jazz. We'll come to that in a sec. Again, you know how the game works. So you know what's going to be said here, largely. Have you? This is from RJ Bisbee. Have you tried Parker's British Food located in Buffalo, New York? They have great sausage rolls. RJ, I have. I have. Yeah, years ago, they sent me a number of pork pies to do a an article, I think, when Lost in the Pond was still a blog as opposed to a YouTube channel. And, uh, and it was great. Yeah, we really enjoyed it. And I think I did a write-up on them of some kind. Uh, so if you're, you know, into that kind of thing, Check them out. Check them out. I don't have a link to hand, but check them out. Yeah. All right. Um, Arby's and Hardy's are not the same, says Bill. Well, this is true. They are definitely different from each other. No doubt about that. Uh, Lizzie Boredom. Good name. uh, Pun. Hi from Virginia Beach. Have you been here yet? I know you mentioned the weather was similar to England. Well, part of it was. Uh, I think in general, the weather there isn't. I think it was a specific element of it. I, I did a video last year where I went through you know, various weather metrics and found that specific metrics were equal to the same metric in the UK. For instance, I think that, uh, was it um, Cleveland, I think, in Ohio, has a similar amount of rainfall every year. Seattle has a similar amount of cloud cover and temperature and so, and so that and, and virginia beach i can't remember what it had but it was something along you know similar lines i think great all right and it looks like oh we just got another donation thank you daniel uh, america loves you well 
that is very kind. That's very kind of you. I watch a lot of British channels, but yours is the very best. Give me a thumbs up if you agree with Daniel and just, you know, make my ego go even higher. Uh, but Daniel says, uh, all of the other channels from the UK give you a ton of respect for being the original and biggest. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear this. Glad to hear this. Nominated for an award. You know, I'm obligated to say that. My producers told me to. Otherwise, I wouldn't even mention it. <sighs> Jeez. Yeah, so it's... Uh, I've been nominated for a Best Vlogger Award at the uh, was the Blogosphere 2022 Blogosphere Awards. So you should all vote for me. Just I don't have the link to hand. Again, I should have looked this up. But if you want to, go to Google Blogosphere, and I think their website comes up. There's a number of steps. It's weird. It's crazy. It's over the top. But I'm on step three. Not that I want you to do, they just, the producers are telling me that I should remind you to vote for me. Awards, I'm not doing it for awards. Partly I am. All right, uh, some more comments came in uh, and also a donation from Five Toed Sloth Bear. I uh, love the channel. Can you say the names of Illinois cities, uh, Des Plaines and Cairo? I believe, oh goodness, people do say Des Plaines, don't they? But uh, I would probably say the Plains even though it feels like we should drop that final S. And then I've heard that Cairo, Illinois, is Cairo, if I'm not mistaken. But that it's been a while since I've looked at those. So on the spot, I hope I did okay, at least 50%. If not, I need to quit. Okay, and then uh, thank you for that uh, donation, Alisa, uh, and also the uh, animation there. Very beautiful. Nice. All right, and where are we going? We've got, uh, we've got eight minutes left. I think we'll go to the hour, uh, but I'm going to pull this sticker off now. Ow! I thought this wouldn't stick. Uh, if, you, if you couldn't see it, it says jazz. And jazz, we have, I mean, we've heard, of course, we have jazz in England. You can buy jazz records. People know about it. It's just not, a, it, it, it doesn't usually feature as the soundtrack to your day in England quite as much as it does in the US. For instance, you'll go into a coffee shop or you'll go into even a shop of some kind and jazz music will be playing, you know, often instrumental jazz. And uh, it, it, it's just very, it's almost a very, very tangible memory. You, you can't really touch music, but it sticks out to me when I first moved here of, ooh, wow, okay, this is different. You know, because it's not just, I heard it in Panera Bread. I think, the next day. But I'd already heard it, I think, coming through Indianapolis Airport and many other places. And I just, it, it suddenly struck me that this isn't a coincidence. This is something that I might hear a lot. And it's proven to be the case to the point where I, you know, I feel like I quite like jazz. Is that, is it cool to say that still? I'm not saying it to be cool, but if I'm being uncool, I would like to know. All right. Thank you. Uh, it looks like a, a couple more donations came in here. Uh, uh, thank you, Russ Wig. And uh, let's see, a couple more came in as well. Uh, Car Wash Life. The Chicago hot dog is the best you've ever eaten, yes or no? It's good. It is good. By the way, if you heard a bang just then, I'm also concerned. I think somebody dropped something through there. The Chicago hot dogs are, are very good. But I don't know. I tend to like Polish sausage hot dogs more. I don't know why. I just do. Um, I'm again, cancel me if you want. We could we could take this to Twitter. Uh, we really ought to not do that. And then uh, and then one other comment came in. This is from Rachel. Thank you, Rachel, for the donation. Who says, "Would you have moved to the U.S. without meeting your wife?" That's a great question for a number of reasons. Number one. You know, moving to the U.S. would have been hard without that element, for sure. But I think I probably, at the back of my mind, maybe had the desire to one day either live here or visit here extensively. But then I met my wife at Lancaster University in England, and it just sort of developed from there. It was, it was kind of purely coincidental. But I think going back to that early obsession that I had with the United States, it might have meant that I sort of gravitated toward her more than I perhaps otherwise would have. I don't know. I mean, if, if that did happen, it was subconscious. 
Uh, but without her, it would have been a lot harder because a lot of people tell me, oh, you know, I want to move to the United States. Can what ha, can you recommend how I might go about it? And most of the time I can't because they're not trying to move here out of marriage. It's just because they have this desire to live in the US, you know, and, you know, I say, well, what's your plan? Is it to do it through a work sponsorship? Is it through education? Is it further education? Is it through marriage? And most of the time I can't help them. I'm not an expert, you know, in that field. Uh, to be honest. Uh, all right, let's see. We have a couple more comments come in. Uh, thank you, Sweet G, uh, for the donation and also for voting for me. That means the world to my producers again. Uh, so that is really fantastic. And also to Beverly, thank you as well for that donation. Let's take a look at some more questions that came in. Big question marks there. That's from Pamela. That's probably the best way to do this. Use huge question marks. How often um, are you recognized out in the wild? Oh, that's a very good question. It does happen a lot, actually, yeah. Um, I think the glasses, people often say, oh, I recognize the glasses, you know, it gave you away. But I put it this way, right? So before the pandemic, maybe twice a year, I'd be out and about and somebody would come up to me and uh, say, uh, oh, you're that, you're that guy from YouTube, aren't you? And I'd be like, well, yeah. Whether it's the one you're thinking of, I don't know. But I am a guy from YouTube. And then the pandemic happened. You know, I was in the house basically for a year without leaving, essentially. And then I left with the channel having grown sevenfold. And suddenly I was getting recognized every day, every time I went out. Um, you'd think that's weird. I mean, to me, that's still weird because it's not like, it's not like I'm Brad Pitt. You know, I might have his looks, but I'm not on his fame level or anything like that. And and yet, here I was, sort of a niche, under a niche. That's what this is. It's just a niche, right? Just a, a specific group of people found, find my channel. And yet, a lot of them live apparently on the north side of Chicago, but also Disneyland and uh, Oxford, UK, and a lot of other places where this happens. And yeah, it's it's pretty unusual, but I I kind of like it, you know, because it's it's like that thing I always say about how having a British accent in the Midwest is a nice icebreaker. I don't have to do any work; it just sort of happens. People go, "Ooh, I love your accent," you know, and then that leads to other conversations. Well, it's the same with this. I love your channel, man, and I'm go I go, "Oh, thanks, great," you know, vote for me on the awards. I'm getting good at this, as you can see. All right, great. Uh, so we've got two minutes remaining, um, and I just want to uh, just quickly uh, see if there are any final questions. I'm an Anglophile. Are there Amerophiles in Britain, asks Mary. That's a great question. I was one, and there are plenty, actually. I get a lot of British people getting in touch with me asking that very question. How do I move to the United States? I love America. I love everything about it. I want to live there. Um and I think we have a kind of fantastical view of the US from the movies. We're all aware, I think, of like the, the political tension of the country or sort of other other tensions here. And, and we acknowledge that. Don't get me wrong. But there is the day to day side of living here that I absolutely love. And just seeing the whole country, uh, the beauty of it, the majesty of this country. You know, I really I think it's. It's worth the pursuit, and I can't wait to keep doing it. Uh, Sparky, thank you for the donation, uh, says, I'm American, and I hate it when people say I could care less instead of I couldn't care less. It's just wrong. I think we all have, you know, different views on these things, and for me, it's it's a case of I need to know, and I don't know this, actually, but I, I need to know where it originated and why and how it came about, you know, who came up with it. It could have been, you know, people who maybe didn't know any better. Maybe English was a second language to them, or maybe it was people who, I don't know, just were playing around. A lot of etymology just came from fun, fantastical um, ideas. You know, think of the think of the phrase, the bee's knees. It's thought to have originated in the US, actually, even though it's often associated with Britain. Because at the time, I think it was the early 20s, at the time, a lot of phrases like that were emerging in the United States, right? You had the cat's meow. Uh, there was another one that failed to stay around. I think it was the elephant's instep. It, it disappeared after a while, but that was that. Uh, good job. Keep it up, says uh, OICU812. Thank you for that. Thank you for the donation. And um, yes, entomology, a bit different from etymology. 
Charles, uh, but uh, we, you know, the study of ants is also of uh, keen interest to me. You know, I love animals in general. Uh, we we sometimes have ants here, so they have to, you know, be taken care of, and uh, and all of that. So Bob's your uncle, says RJ, and you know, it is eight o'clock, and Bob's your uncle. That means we are at the end. Did I get through all my stickers? I'll have to go through on my phone and make sure those pictures of Big Ben are taken care of. They will be. I know that's for I know that for a fact. This has been a great chat, everyone. I share, you know, Ginger's sentiments on that right down to the smiley face. Although I you know, by default don't have one of those. But it's been great. You know, I think I love occasionally just popping in there, doing these live interactions and um, just reflecting, I think, on some of the things that I've discovered about myself and this country. And uh, and so that's really good. Thank you for all joining. This has been a really good turnout, especially for a Saturday night. I'm now going to go and film some more videos because that's what I do. My weekends are Wednesdays and Tuesdays, so don't feel bad for me. Okay, I will log off then. How does one log off? I don't have my technical team. We just press end stream is what we do. I want to say good night and I will see you all and you'll see me rather the other way around for another video coming up in soon. Soon. I don't give away all my secrets. It's soon. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Oh, it's still not over. Sorry. That was truly awkward. <laughs>